live on both. Live. Today is Tuesday. Hope you're having a great day. I'm Kevin Brotts here with Get Bit Outdoors. Want to share with you our new gaff kits and our new Yeti raffle. So we just launched 10 new gaff kits today, making it super easy for you to build your own gaffs. I'm going to give a few minutes here for guys to kind of join in. I know sometimes it takes a few minutes for notifications to pop up in Facebook and YouTube. And um, I know a lot of people have been wanting to see this. Um, so I want to give them a few minutes here to join in with us. Guys, also take note that during the live videos, if you have comments or questions about products you want to see, even if it's unrelated to what we're doing, it can be about a totally different blank, a product, a comment, or a um, component, let me know. Go ahead and put it in the comments now so you don't forget. And when we're done with this um, gap build here, we'll go ahead and go, go through the comments and we'll show you whatever you asked about or answer any questions you have. So every day we go live between three and five roughly and we're here for you so it's not just to go over our topic it's here to answer and we're here to answer any questions you have and show you any product that you may want to see Anna Mona from puerto rico says hello there he's watching from puerto rico hello that's awesome good deal hope the weather's good there um you got more comments coming? larry green says can you cover the details on the liberty reaction blanks yeah. medium and media heavy uh seven foot construction okay. and maybe flex each yeah, absolutely. So those aren't far from us. Um, we'll go over those once we go over the gap. I know we want to kind of we'll stay on this, but keep your comments coming in, and then Felix can go over them all at the end. Unless if it's, if it's a gap question, Felix, go ahead and bring it to me while we're doing the gap. And then after that, we'll go through and check all the comments about other components and blanks. So the gap kits are super super easy to put together and build. It's probably the easiest build you could ever do. Literally, it's just installing a rear grip, a foregrip, and gluing in a hook. It's that easy. If you choose to go you know, beyond that, it's up to you. You can put a wrap on the blank, you can do whatever you want, right? Just like a rod. But unlike a rod, you're not wrapping any guides, right? So it can be very, very quick and easy. And if you're in the business of selling, you know, rods or gaffs or components, this is a great product for you. It's a very easy, quick way to make some good money and um, deliver a good product to your customers. So with those 10 options, we have everything from a two inch, like a pick gaff, right? So a little hand gaff. Maybe you're doing a lot of bottom fishing and just want something quick and easy to lean down over the gunnel and pick a snapper off, you know, the surface or, you know, something similar to that. Anything you might want to be lip gaffing, you know, a little two foot hand gaff is perfect for that. And a two inch hook is ideal. Um, it's super razor sharp and it just, it makes it easy to get an accurate hook in the lip by going with a smaller hook. And that's what the two inch hook is for. You could obviously still gaff a fish wherever you wanted to with a two inch hook, but it's easier to be more accurate with a two inch hook, especially if you're trying to get a fish in the gaff or in, in the lip, right? So most big game fishermen who are, you know, gaffing say mahi, tuna, kingfish, you know, bigger fish, where you're just taking a body shot or a head shot and not trying to get it just in their lip or their mouth, then you use like a three inch, probably the most common hook out there. And if you're, you know, fighting big, big fish, you know, then a four inch comes into play, big yellowfin tuna, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but I'd say the three inch is by far the most common gap hook. But um, anyway, so we have the two foot, or two foot gap available, that comes with a two inch hook. Then we also have our four foot gaps. Um, those are available in 3-inch and 4-inch hooks. It's made very easy, right? The blank comes with it, the hook comes with it, the rear grip, and the foregrip. So you just literally, if you go on that gaff kit page, so if you go on the rod building kits, then go to gaffs, then go to gaff kits, you'll see all 10 kits lifted, lifted there. And we're going to post that link in the comments as well as the description once the video is over. For some reason, I can't post the link when we go live. Uh, prior to going live, so I'll post it up after. But if you want to see it while we're live, if you go to Ride Building Kits, go to Gaffs, then go to Gap Kits, and you'll see the 10 kits there. My, the Michael Geyer asks, will a typical gaff fit in a paddle holder clip for the kayak guys? Um, I mean, I don't know exactly what that clip dimensions are, but I would say, I would guess yes. It's kind of an average blank. Um, and as far as the amber goes, uh, larger, you know, if you're an inshore guy. Um, if you're an offshore fisherman, it's your average offshore kind of blank diameter. But if you're an inshore guy, 
Um, it's a little bit larger diameter blank, so I'm not sure how that relates to what that clip accepts, but my guess is it would probably fit. I mean, you know, diameter on this is probably just about an inch on the butt, so if that works for you, and it's tapered too, but um, so two foot, the first one went over, here's a four footer, the four footer is available on a three inch and four inch hook, and then there's also, I know some of that's going to fall at some point, um, here is the six foot gap that's available, this I have set up here with the three inch hook, this is also available with the four inch hook, okay? And at any point, guys, you can buy all these components separately. So let's say you say, hey, I wanted to do the eight foot gap with a two inch hook. You can, you just buy those parts separately. We don't have an eight foot gap with a two inch hook option just because it's not that common. We try to keep the, the kits pretty simple to what's gonna be um, you know, more apt to turn. So you can see there, three inch hook shaft is knurled. Um, so they're knurled, a lot of them are flat as well. So there's some kind of contour in all the, the shafts of these hooks so that when we pour our epoxy in there, it has something to bite when the epoxy cures. So it's not just perfectly smooth and it might turn and pull out. Whether it's knurled or notched, um, I think the two inches notch, let me show you that. You can see it's, it's flattened. It's not perfectly round. That way it can't spin. You've got edges and corners to catch the epoxy that you're gonna pour in there so that it prevents it from spinning. It gives it more bite, it helps from pulling also. Guys, I've built, I have gaffs for this, I have gaffs older than most of my rods. I mean, going back probably almost 20 years, um, and I have not pulled a hook out of a gaff. And I have done nothing different than I'm gonna show you today. It's very easy. Um, so there you go, that's a three inch with the six foot option. And then here is something else you can do. Here's the six or the, the um, six foot version with the Winthrop hook. Okay, so we're going to put in an option to upgrade your kit to a Winthrop hook if you want. Those kits or that option isn't currently up there, but you can definitely buy these separately as well. You can buy Winthrop hooks. You can buy the bats and gaff blanks and other components. But uh, we are going to add that as an upgrade option here soon. You know, quick and easy. So I'm going to build these two for you today. Um, super quick and easy. And then real quick show you we also have our eight foot gaffs. The eight foot gaffs are available with a 3k weave or just your standard fiberglass black finish. These are gorgeous. <clears throat> you can use these for any size hook you want. Um, the ends of them I believe they're threaded. And the reason they're threaded isn't just to, um, it's not to thread a hook in. Yes, they're threaded. Um, so they're not threaded to receive a hook, per se. They're threaded so that your epoxy has a surface to bite, right? All those threads in there will fill with epoxy, and they'll keep that epoxy slug from just sliding out because it has those ribs in there from the threads. So don't think that, well, I need a hook that threads in there. No, it's not meant to thread in there. Those ribs are just meant to grab your epoxy. So, um, I have built a couple of these eight footers, and they're awesome. Super heavy duty. And you guys, especially king fishermen, that uh, you know that king always seems to roll up just out of reach as he's doing that last death spiral, and that's often when the hook just seems to pop out, especially in the middle of a big tournament, and your winning fish is laying right there, and he spits the hook, and he's gone. Eight foot gap gets that reach out there. So you can stick him as soon as he comes up. So, good stuff there. Guys, real quick, I'll go over the components and some of the supplies that I use to make a gap. Very easy. This is it. Okay. Two part paste for your handle epoxy. Um, put your few grips on. And then I'll use some two part finish epoxy. Any thread finish epoxy that you have laying around. I use that to pour in um, the tip for the hook. You don't want to use a paste epoxy. You want to use a liquid or at least a gel that's, that's very, very smooth and runs well because you want to pour in there and fill up any voids in that uh, blank and that your hook goes in there and nothing pushes out as far as like, you know, a paste epoxy would push out and maybe not settle back in unless it's really, really smooth. 
So use a very liquid epoxy when you're setting your hook. Um, so we'll use some flex coat for that. Um, and then anytime I'm messing with epoxy or building a handle, I try to keep a spray bottle of alcohol in around rubbing alcohol. Um, it's just a quick and easy way to spray some extra epoxy excess and wipe it off. Okay. And then these chem wipes are awesome because they're small. I always feel bad if I'm using a whole paper towel or half a paper towel when I'm wiping off epoxy. So these little chem wipes, um, they're lint free, so they don't leave any kind of like dusty residue or you know rip apart when you're wiping your epoxy off. Now you got more of a mess to clean up. These little wipes are perfect. One wipe, I'm not wasting much. Throw that thing out; they're cheap, um, and you're not making much waste. So mixing cups. Popsicle sticks, piece of cardboard to um, mix your paste on. These are the rear grips for the gaffs. You can see the BC31 butt cap fits perfectly on there. Um, you'll see that these are different diameter grips and they come kitted up already for you when you buy their respective kit for whatever size um, blank you're getting. And they will fit relatively close. They may not fit perfect because they're being universal against different lengths, different tapers. So you may have the same grip for a four foot versus a six foot gap and it may fall up a little bit short or maybe a little bit too loose. And I'm going to show you how to um, counteract that today. But um, no different than building a fishing rod, right? You just ream it out a little bit or heat up the microwave, make the foam soft, and slide it down. Um, so the first thing I do, we'll go ahead and We'll, uh, we'll build this one first. The first thing I do is make sure I dry fit everything, right? Before I open up any epoxy, I want to make sure that I've got everything reamed or fit perfectly to the way I want it. That way I'm not in the middle of a mess. Okay, so this is the grip that comes with this. And you can see it's a little bit loose. Not much, but just a little bit. So what I'm going to do here, just like what if I was building a rod, Take my china marker. I've got my grip fully seated here. Take my china marker. I know that that space there is the entire length of my rear grip. Okay. Um, actually, you know what? Before I tape that up, let's put our foregrip on. And this, uh, let's get that at least on the blank. Okay. So on this gaff here, I'm going to use a foregrip from the kit, and on the second gaff I'm going to build, I'm not going to use a foregrip from the kit, I'm going to use some wind wrap to show you a different option. But this comes in the kit, and that fits money. I mean, that's a perfect length for when you're reaching out there to stick a fish. It's a nice handle with a part, boom, stick that fish, good to go. So I know that foregrip is in the right spot, feels good. Obviously, guys, you could move that if you wanted to. If you want it to be further down, move it further down. If it's a little bit loose, put a little bit of masking tape under there. You know, if it's snug, you're good to go. Okay. So I know that one's going to end up there. All right. Now, slide that back off. Put our rear grip. Okay. So we know this is a little bit loose, right? Not a problem. Take some masking tape. And I typically use a tape dispenser, but I don't have one in this room. Um, and very easy. It's not gonna take much. I could tell it was, you know, close to being snug. One little ring every few inches. All this is really doing is just serving to keep my grip centered because that paste epoxy that I'm gonna use will keep but we'll make up for any difference. It's a small gap. Um, and the reason I'm not testing all these yet is because I don't need I don't need much. And I feel like a few wraps is gonna do it. I can always add more. Okay? See that? You can hear it. Hear it hitting that tape. It's just a slim friction fit. And that's made perfect. Um, and you want to make sure when you have that seated that your tape isn't sticking out past your grip. Like, see how that is? I gotta back that off a little bit and uh, make that go down. 
so not a problem. Because if you epoxy that on there and your tape is sticking out, that doesn't look good. You know? So we'll take that, back it off my mark a little bit, put the same wrap around it. Boom. Okay. So that, that's perfectly flush. My buck have to go on. Only mark I see there is my China mark, and I can wipe that off now because my rings are on there. You keep the trash bin around for your dirty wipes and extra tape. You don't want to put um, tape or uh, epoxy covered wipes on your table and start stacking them up and then you get epoxy on your hands and your workplace. Try to stay clean and um, makes cleanup much easier. So we know that's a snug fit all the way down. So that's good. We know this is a snug fit, ready to go. And then the only other thing in my epoxy is my butt cap right on the here. So I think the thing to do, rather than um, building up both at the same time, we'll build this one. That way you guys don't really have a lot of time you know, we can respect that and get this handle built. And then we'll pull this um, tip or um, the hook. And then if you want to stay with us while we build the other one, you can. Okay. All right, so everything is good. We know we're dry fitted. Everything is good to go. We can make this some epoxy. Okay, this rod bond is super easy to work with. Um, Ralph O'Quinn. Did an amazing job creating this formula years ago. Very forgiving. Literally just take your popsicle stick. Now I'm going to make two gaffs, so I'm going to go ahead and use a little bit extra epoxy. But you literally just eyeball a 50 50 mix. Guys, while I'm mixing this, I'm going to tell you about our raffle. So we have bought the Yeti cooler right here. That thing is sweet. Um, for you to win for free, okay? So if you go underneath specials, there's a Yeti cooler link, and the raffle tickets are $10. Now, the cool part is you get those $10 back and get bit store credit. So it automatically shows up in your account, and then your next purchase... Within 24 hours. Within 24 hours, okay. Within 24 hours, we put that $10 for every ticket you buy. If you want to buy 10 tickets, it, you know, you get all that money back and get bit store credit within 24 hours. So you log back in your account, in 24 hours, you have that money available to you. So it's basically a free raffle, just showing that you're interested, that way it's legit, that way we know whoever wins this Yeti wanted it, and isn't just getting in a raffle because they wanna win something for free, okay? So you can get as many tickets as you want. Guys, it's, this is a sweet cooler thing, it's almost 300 bucks. Um, we're gonna throw in a get bit hat with it, and it's yours to win for free. We're going to do this raffle live on Friday. I think the raffle closes at 2, 2 o'clock, Friday uh, afternoon, Eastern time. So between now and Friday, don't wait, right? If you know you're gonna, you want to get in, get in it now before you forget. Again, it's $10 per ticket, but you get the $10 back and get big credit. So if you know you're going to buy rotting, rod building stuff at some point, go ahead, get on the raffle. Get a chance to win that for free. All right, so we have our part. A in there. Yeah, as you can tell, it's pizza cake. There's no special um, measuring you gotta do to work with this stuff. This jar here is a little bit older. That's why the pop likes to stick. But the paste uh, is just put my popsicle stick. This stuff here is a little bit older jar. Of course, I'm gonna, at the bottom of it. Very easy to use. Just eyeball 50 50 as close as you can. You can tell I'm not measuring or worrying about you know, putting in a mixing cup first or any of that stuff. Very forgiving. Pop 
popsicle stick. Maybe we can get my hands all dirty. It's all good. Part of it, guys, just try to keep your hands clean while you're mixing with this stuff. Um, just makes it easy. Clean up in the end. Just, you're going to be touching your grips, you know, touching the blank, and touching all kinds of stuff. The more stuff you touch, the dirty it's all going to get. Um, even that's got some yuck up on it. So when you're mixing this, it's literally just like that. Piece of cake. That's why I like using a paste. Take your up. Because it doesn't run, right? So when I push my grips on there and I have my excess coming through, I don't have to worry about rushing to grab it and catch it real quick before it drips all over the blank or all over the floor or whatever. Um, so you can see those two parts mixed together and just become one creamy consistency, kind of an amber color light amber and, and that's it I mean you get all your outside edges your inside edges mix it up nice and smooth and I probably already mixed it more than you need to right there but that's it yeah. and I use a slow cure you could use the, the fast you know the quick ball right here if you wanted to um, but there's no real need to in this case I mean unless you had to Build the rod the same day within a few hours, or you know you want to do some fancy wraps in your gaff within a few hours. I just like losing the slow cure because you don't have to worry about it kicking fast, and then all of a sudden you get a big mess on your hands, right? So now we have that put together, mixed up. We're gonna go ahead and just lather our epoxy on. Okay, just like a rod, I like to build. My gaff from the butt and up, right? Because you're going to slice up down the taper. You wouldn't want to put your foregrip on and then not get your rear grip on, right? So do your rear grip first. It's literally just smearing that stuff on there. Um, it does not have to be perfect. That stuff's going to smear and push itself around also. Michael Geyer asks Is ventilation an issue with that epoxy? So this stuff is not. Um, noxious. Um, you can, I mean, anytime you can use ventilation, do it, right? Why not? Well, the more fresh air, the better. But this stuff is not, um, I forget the uh, terms for it as far as the, um, the VOCs. Um, they're very, very light. But um, yeah, I mean, if you have a window or you can, do it outside. But like, I mean, I'm working with this right now, I don't smell anything. Juan Isidoro asks, do you guys have gaff hooks on sale? Uh, not on sale, just because they are price so low to begin with. There's not much margin there in any of this. The gaffs are really cheap to begin with. So there's not um, no room there, really. All right, so you just literally slowly slide that down there. And I'll do a slight twist just to kind of fill in any voids, and you can see that excess kind of mushrooming on there. So when I get to the end, just take your popsicle stick, take it right off, right? And then I'll take a little bit, and I should have wiped most of that off already. That's more than enough for the butt cap. Get a good layer on there. Um, you don't want any dry spots. At the same time, it doesn't have to be crazy perfect, but why not do it right? So that's it. Take your butt cap. I'll hold my foregrip or my grip at the same time, push it, spin it. Okay, now that that's seated on there, push it, right? If I left it, there'd be a small gap because the end of this butt cap has a taper and I could just fill the recess. But if you push it the rest of the way, now I know my blank goes through the whole butt cap. So it makes sense to seat it all the way and it helps cover up any china marks as well. Now I can come back. You can see I like using fresh popsicle sticks 
you know, throughout the thing, because less chance of me getting sticky, and there isn't glue already on the stick, um, so it just cleans up easier. Popsicle sticks are super cheap, and they're well worth you know, the penny or whatever that just costs to, um, to help keep things clean. Now, with that on there, here's my little rubbing alcohol, all right? Just a few little sprays, literally. Much easier than trying to clean up with just a dry paper towel. Take a few wipes. Wipe off the excess. That's it, that rear grip is now good to go. Super clean. Guys, you could obviously do an even better job if you're not talking to a camera and you know working inside a small space like this right here. But you can see there. That's it. Rear grip is on. Make sure we don't have any epoxy on the blank. It's inevitable guys, you touch it with your finger somewhere and then you know just sprint. Okay. So make sure in the middle of that if you have different gaps going together don't mix up your parts. I know I only have one foregrip here with me but I'll double check again. That's it. Sits perfectly well right there. Good to go. Juan asks how around how much is a kit for a complete gaff? Um, you know what I didn't even look at the pricing on the kits. We just put them together this morning. Um, but if you go to the rod building page and go to the uh, so go to the rod kit page rod building kits page then go to gaffs and then go to gaff kits they're right there um, I want to say they're like in the 50s ish 60s so it just depends on which gaff you pick um, but that gets you the blank the, the grips and the hook everything pull the trigger on one component you know one product and it gets you everything you need there. That's it. If you load up one side versus the other, as far as how much epoxy you put somewhere, put it on the smaller taper, so the direction that you're starting from, so that your excess will push over any spots where you have a dry spot. Don't go heavy here and light here, because your light spots won't get the excess. If you put your heavy stuff up front, your excess will um, taper over any holes that you go over next. So now we've got that epoxied up, ready to slide our grip down. Literally same thing as before, just slide it, spin it, and we have our China marker right there. I'm going to slide right to that, now I see my China marker here, in there, I know to stop, take another fresh popsicle stick. Guys, if you take a dirty popsicle stick, you're going to smear epoxy on areas you don't want it. I'm telling you, a bag of these of 100 is like, I don't know, they're cheap. So, it's well worth it. I'm just going to kind of pull the epoxy away like that. Take a rag. I'm going to take a few rags. Throw that out. it again, get most of it off. We'll come back with the spray bottle. It just your rubbing alcohol goes so far in a spray bottle, you get a lot more out of it than trying to pour it on there or whatever. And you get it a lot better coverage. So now that we've sprayed it a little bit, come back again, wipe it. At the same time, wipe our china marks off. Because now our grip is where we want it to be. You can tell I'm being careful here not to push the bottom grip against the floor here. I could easily, you know, work easier if I did that, but I could push that grip 
and you know have an issue there. So I chose to keep that off the ground. Makes a little bit more cumbersome to work with, but not too bad. All right. One more rag, a little bit of epoxy. seeing here is just alcohol that's going to just evaporate. We'll wipe off our china marker up top. And that's it guys. As far as the grips go. Piece of cake, right? So now, I mean that took me just a few minutes while talking. Um, you know, you could do it even faster if you were just focused on cranking these off. Uh, if I was in the shop building a bunch of these, I'd take all my rear grips, boom, 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 all my rear grips, done. Come back, all my fore grips, boom, 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 four grips, done. Come back, all my hooks, boom, boom. I mean, you could do a hundred of these in a day, honestly, no problem, and make some good, some good, some good dollars doing it. Um, one thing I forgot to show you that I already did, um, shame on me, was I already took a piece of, um, I took some rags and put them up the blank. To create a plug for my hook, so I'll show you how to do that here on my um, my other rod, my other blank. But but shame on me for not doing that yet. It's very easy to do, so you didn't miss much. Literally, taking paper towels or paper of any kind, newspaper, in the blank, right? We'll do it on this one. So you see the hook here, right? You need to create a stop so that when you pour your epoxy in, it doesn't run on your whole blank. So all I did was, um, I'll do this way first, right? So take some paper towels, shove them in this hole, okay? Here we go, timber. Take a scrap blank, a wooden dowel, something, right? Take a, that paper towel or whatever newspaper you chose to put in there and just shove this down there, okay? Until it gets tight. Here, it's tight, okay? And then take another paper towel, and it may take a few on both. It's a piece of cake, it's quick and easy. All right? And on this side, start a little bit smaller. Roll it up to where it's kind of thin, going this way. Okay? Here, take your gaff hook and use that to push it down. Now you're working for both ends. You have a stop somewhere in here on this way, and now you're creating a stop this way. Okay? So this stop is your ultimate, that's your hard stop. Okay? From the, the large end, push that in as tight as you can. Then take this side and push stuff in it until your hook, see that snug? It's because I already put some stuff in there. Okay? And then I can take my hook and push it down or take this out and put more plug in here if I wanted to stick out further. I hope that makes sense. It's super easy. All you're doing is creating a plug in there so when you pour epoxy, it doesn't run past it. Okay? But you want to make sure you put it at the right spot to where your hook ends up sitting where you want it. Okay? Some guys like a little bit longer sticking out. Some guys like to have the hook dead even with the blank. Um, I like to have it just above it, maybe a half an inch above. Like if you have a straight plane here, maybe a half inch above where the blank stops, okay, and that's it. You also notice on this, I put a winding check on the hook shaft, okay? That is not included in the kit. Reason being, uh, I don't want to complicate things. Some people will look at this and be like, what's that for, or how do I do that? I did not put this in the kit, but if you want a winding check for your kit, it's very easy. Get a BWC 8, okay? It's the right size for almost all the hooks, and it just helps create a little bit of a finish right there on the top of the hook where it meets the blank. Some people don't like it. Um, some people will just do a thread ramp right here. Most people do nothing. And that's why we left it out because I don't want to make even hard, you know another step that you don't need. But you can use it if you want to. Just a side note there. So guys, 
before you put that butt cap on, put that plug in first. Okay? I should have showed you that when I was prepping. I did these real quick, and then we got in the live feed, and I forgot I did it. But like you saw, I just did on this. Plug your blank first. Plug it from the large end up and then the small end down. Create that right stop so that your gap hook sits at the right height that you want it to be at. So when you pour your epoxy in, you're good. All right. So with that being said, let's get back to this one. Now in this one, uh, I'm building this for a friend of mine. He got the Winthrop hook. Okay. If you're going to use a Winthrop hook, um, you need to go with a. We'll set it up. I, mean, I want to get you. I don't want to confuse you. Um, a three-inch Winthrop hook needs to go in the larger size four blank from Batson. Okay. But don't even worry about any of that because we're going to give you a Winthrop option if you want to upgrade your Winthrop hook. So anyway, um, I put a hosel on this. I have a stop in here already, but to make sure it's where I want it, I'm going to go ahead and put one more piece in here. Guys, there's no sense pouring extra epoxy in there and just being like, oh, well, hopefully it stops soon and you have to keep mixing epoxy and pouring it down there. No, go ahead and create a stop. And see how that's fighting me a little bit right there? It's because that stop is right where I want it to be. Okay? And put a few extras in there so you get a nice solid squeeze, a good tight plug in there. So your epoxy's not leaking past it. Okay? I know that's right where I want it. Good to go. We got our grips, our plug, now we're gonna glue the hook in, and that's it. And you'll see on these Winthrop hooks, they put that score all the way through here and notch the shank just so we can grab epoxy once it dries. Alright. So let me grab some old epoxy. Okay, this is a great way, if you have old epoxy that turned yellow, this is some old Threadmaster that turned yellow. Um, if you have some of that laying around, you're never going to see this thread finish. So, it's a good time to use your discolored thread finish. As is marbling, you like the marble. Um, just make sure you have the same amounts of both, 9 cc's, 9 cc's. There's that. Um, because we are again putting this inside a blank and not ever going to see it, I'm not even worried about bubbles. So I'm going to mix it up with a popsicle stick just because it stirs much quicker and easier than your round little mixing stick that I would typically use. And it's probably going to take a few of these. You know, there's it's a small diameter hole, but it's pretty long, and we got to get epoxy all the way in there. Um, chances are we may put too much in, and that's okay. We want to see it push out. That way we know we have more than enough coverage in there. Juan Isidoro says after the video ends, he's going to order a couple kits. Oh, that's awesome, Juan. Thank you, buddy. Yeah, they're awesome. Batson came out with these gap components, I think last year, year before, and um, made it very easy. And uh, we should have put the other kit earlier, but that's all good. Now we get to do it live. Do you want to make sure, even though you're not going to see this, that it's mixed properly. You don't want to get halfway, you know, get done with all this and then next day or two go grab your gap hook and realize it's spinning. Right, or it can pull out, that would be bad. So, you don't have to worry about bubbles or using super clear epoxy, but you want to use a good epoxy that's going to flow. I like using any of the thread finishes because they're super liquidy, and you want to mix it very thoroughly. I'm probably mixing overkill, but you know, there's a lot of epoxy in here. I want to make sure it's mixed up very well. And I 
you're not going to have any issues. Uh, I'm, this gap is actually going to a buddy of mine. I hate to be the one that built in a gap and mistakes a fish and just hooks that up. Um, so here, all I'm going to do is just kind of pinch my cup to create a spout. Let's see if I can do this without spilling it. And just slowly pour it down in there. And go slow so it gets time to let gravity do its thing and pull that epoxy down in there. And you don't have to fill it because the shaft of the hook is going to displace a lot of that area, a lot of that air down in there. Um, but I don't really want to stick a gap, you know, a gap hook down there and pull it out. Stick it in there and pull it out and get epoxy everywhere either. I'd rather kind of fill almost too much and let it just come out when it's I put the hook in. Zachary Tucker says that he'll also be ordering a kit. Awesome, Zach. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate the feedback, guys. You know, we do this stuff because it's fun and we love it, but ultimately, the feedback really helps make it worth it to know that uh, it's useful to you guys. Okay. It's slowing down a lot there. Um, you can see that it's actually full. So, that's going to be way more than we needed. Because it's gonna come out when the hook uh, goes in there. Uh, you know what I'm gonna do? Rather than making a giant mess, I'm gonna pour some of that out. Not a ton, but some of it. Because I know we're not gonna need all that. It's gonna push out for sure. And it's probably gonna make a mess. So what I'll do is I'll put this box right here. I'm not the neatest guy by any means, but I don't like a mess. So all I'm going to do here is literally just take the hook. We've already made sure our plug is in the right spot. And I've put my hollow where I want it to be as well. Yeah, we're already pushing out. That's going to make a big mess. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and pour some more of that out. going to start oozing out. That's okay. Guys, you don't want to be sitting here and have none come out and be wondering was there enough in there? I'd rather know there was more than enough. Okay? And then when you get close to being, you know, here I know where I'm at, be, where I want to be because I marked it with a winding check. If you're not using a winding check, take your Sharpie and put a mark there. Okay? You can mark it with tape, but then if you get epoxy on the tape, now it becomes an issue trying to pick the epoxy off and get your tape off. If you put a black Sharpie mark on there, it's going to sit there and it's going to look, it's going to be black against a black blank. You're never going to be bothered by it. Okay? So with that hook settling in there, um, before I seat it all the way in where I want it, I'm going to wipe off some of the excess. It's just going to help keep it clean. See it down the rest of the way. Get some of that excess off. Again, I'm telling you, these Kim wipes, they're super cheap. I'm not sitting here having to tear paper towels up. Uh, we sell them on the site, but that's not why I'm talk, telling you about them. No matter where you buy them, the Kim wipes are very easy to use and keeps from having a paper towel fall apart on you. I'm going to seat that down there. I'm going to pull my winding check down just a little bit. I think my plug is hitting. Just like that. Wipe my excess off. And I'm not going to be too, too picky about it because I'm going to come back and put a wrap on here for my buddy. Um, just a little bit of black thread with a silver trim band. And it really just finishes off a gap nicely. Put a little wrap with a silver trim band, a little wrap on both sides of the grip with a silver trim band, the boat name, your friend's name, your name, whatever. Um, just personalizes the build with minimal effort. I mean, you can literally fill the gap 
in less than an hour with those wraps and epoxy. Sam Folds asks, do you have to center the hook in the blank or just eyeball it close? So good question, Sam. The nice thing about these kits is the diameter of your blank is almost perfect for the diameter of the hook. So it falls in there and it's almost perfectly centered, right? Now, in the event, let's say you want to put, <clears throat> you know, you have a hook that's not fitting well. If you want to use a different uh, gaff blank or whatever, a smaller hook maybe than what we're putting in a kit, um, you can just use a little bit of tape, make an arbor on the shaft of the hook and arbor up so it fits centered perfectly in your blank. I think, hope that makes sense. Just put a few rings on the shaft of the hook and it'll center perfectly in there for you. So with that, you know, this one's got a little bit of play because it's a Winthrop and a Batson kit. So I'm just gonna set it uh, close, wipe off any excess epoxy. And again, I'm gonna wrap an epoxy over this anyway. But that's it. You know, so I'll prop this up somewhere. Let's say right here for now. And that's a little off center. There you go. Yeah. So let that finish drying. And that gap is done. You know, um, that one was a little bit more tricky than your regular Batson one because that Winthrop hook isn't perfect, just like Sam asked. Um, that went out hook is a little bit smaller than the, the ID of that blank. So it has a little bit of wiggle room in it, but um, not a big deal. <laughs> that gaff is done. Hugh, Hugh asks, is that a left or right-handed gaff? <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. It's kind of like a pen, you know, it's a left or right-handed pen. I've seen some funny, some funny memes here lately. Um, that's fun to you. Um, so... If you guys want, um, we can show you real quick how to do this handle. Um, I don't know how Felix, Felix feels about that. His arms are getting tired. But um, definitely go to the specials page. Click on the Yeti raffle. Ten bucks a ticket. You get the ten dollars back and get bit store credit within 24 hours. So it's a free raffle, right? You're getting your money back. It just shows us that you're actually interested and not just getting something for free. Uh, just because. because we want you to use it if you guys are winning this stuff we want you to use it promote these brands and um, post pictures up on our Facebook page let people know hey got this from get bit for free join the next raffle or I try to do raffles you know every other week or so maybe once a month as often as we can based on your response if you guys start crushing it knocking these raffles down like you did on the last one those that was nuts like 30 minutes um, that thing was gone so this one we're doing through Friday so if the response on this is great, then we'll do another one every week. You know, I think it's awesome. It's a great way for you guys to get free stuff, and um, we're happy to do it. Just, just fun, right? We're, we're here to have fun. Wanting to those says, can we get tickets for the Yeti and then spend all the credit on the gaffs? Yeah, <laughs> you can. Absolutely. So you get the tickets, and then get, uh, you know, within 24 hours, it'll show up on your account, and you can spend on whatever you want. Michael Geyer says, great job on the video. A uh, professional without coming off has two polished and plenty of good tips. I appreciate it. We're just, we're just real. You know, um, definitely not polished. <laughs> I'm just uh, uh, a redneck doing what I love. <laughs> you know, I love fishing, hunting, rod building, and uh, have a blast sharing it with you guys. So thank you for the compliments and the shares, guys. If you would, please tell your friends. Like it. Share it. I don't even like going through all that stuff because now I feel like I'm selling something. But... That's the way that you guys can really help us out, is tell your friends, other rod builders, other people about us. We don't have the big marketing budgets that other guys do, and it just goes a long way to help us. You know, the more volume we can turn, the more products we can bring in, the better pricing we can offer, et cetera, et cetera. So thank you for sharing. David Sim says that he'll be de uh, definitely be ordering a kit for his buddy so he can go on a fishing trip. <laughs> there you go. Hey, you want to know a great way to get invited on good fishing trips? Bring good gifts when you go. They will invite you back, okay? So somebody or a friend of a friend invites you to go on a boat, bring them a good gift. Not just cash for gas and bait and all that good stuff. Bring them cash and the gaff, right? 
or a rod or whatever. But a gap is a great one because it's pretty cheap and you don't have much time involved and it's going to leave an impression with them and they're going to use it, right? Every time they go fishing, especially if you're fishing for meat, you're going to use a gap. They're going to look at that gap and they're going to think about you because you hooked them up and they're going to invite you back. So that's a good, good point. There you go. So should we stay live for the next one or should we end it? I don't want to... We can, we can start it. Start it? Okay. So this gaff here, we really should do this one. At least the rear grip. Because this one's a little bit different. Now remember, I've already started with my plug. I'm using the 3 inch Batson gaff hook on this gaff. Now this is a personal gaff for me. For the gator boat. Right? Y'all know I do a lot of gator hunting. We gaff our gators in the lip so I can pull them up, pin them against the gunnel, and tape their mouth. The gaff is a very important tool on my gator hunts because I'm not sticking my hands in that gator's mouth until I know he's shut um, and I use the gaff to shut his mouth. So we're using a three inch kit here. This is stock. You buy the six foot three inch gaff kit, this is what you're going to get. You're going to get this, this blank, this hook, uh, this butt cap, and that foregrip. Okay? Now you're not going to see me build the foregrip in this video because I'm going to wrap it with wind wrap later on, whether it's tonight or tomorrow, at the house where I have my rod wrapper set up. Um, once we get this room cleared up again, we'll have a rod wrapper set up in here and we can wrap in here. But uh, all that to say, I'm not going to put a grip on this today. So we've got our plug in there where we want it for the hook. Let's see where this rear grip ends up. Oh, comes up short, right? So. Not a problem. So the next size up is too big. Rudy Casey says, what's your prices on your gator hunts? So Rudy, uh, if you go to floridagatorhunting.com, that's our outfitting website, floridagatorhunting.com. Click on the rates page. They start at 800 bucks for a four to six foot gator. Seven to nine is 1500 bucks. A nine plus is three grand. And they go up from there. So no, they are not in cages. No, they're not penned up somewhere. We're covering big country trying to find these gators. We just judge them and hunt them until we get you the size that you agree to pay for. So that's how we get you one that fits your budget. Jim Lang says uh, he appreciates all the live feeds that you've been doing. You're welcome. Thank you for watching. Uh, Michael Geyer shared to shared the video to his uh, Glock Guy Kayak Fishing Facebook page. Says thank you for being a great resource. You're welcome. Uh, you asked, do the Winthrop hooks hold fish on a lot better? Haven't tried one yet. So, fair question. Uh, we saw a good number of both. Uh, the Winthrop is definitely... So, here's the Winthrop 3-inch compared to the Batson 3-inch. Okay? So, the Winthrop has got more of a sickle hook on it, and the Batson has more of a... Your traditional U style, U style hook. As I've used both, they're both great. Um, the Winthrop, I would say, is a little bit nicer on hooking fish. I think you get a little bit better bite. Um, and once they kind of slide down here, it's not as easy for them to slide down and off. They got more of a sharp angle. Whereas as you, they're going nuts. You know, it's easier for them to kind of slip off. This kind of locks them in place. But I, I don't know if I had an issue with either one. Um, I've used both um, on my personal build. This time I'm using a regular Batson because while I'm hooking gators, by the time I hook one in the face, he's dead pretty much, or he's close to it. And I'm not worried about a fish getting off my hook. If I'm free gaffing, or not, I shouldn't say free gaffing, although it does happen on occasion, free gaff with Kobe or something that's just being dumb when I'm back to the boat. But uh, if I'm gaffing a fish, yeah, I would probably rather gaff him with the wind drop. But I would say most fish that I've gaffed um, and that are gaffed period are gaffed with a traditional style hook. So if you're going to build one and want some a little bit nicer, go with the Winthrop. But if you want to save a few bucks, go with the Batson. Okay, so we know this is coming up short, really short. And this is some pretty tough EVA. The next size up is too big. So I'm going to trust. I haven't done this before. This is live. So if I look like an idiot, just the real deal. You know? um, 
So what I'm gonna do is take this clip, I'm gonna mark where it's coming up tight with a china marker. And I know that I've gotta get from there all the way to there. That's a pretty big push. But I think we can do it. So what we're gonna do is take our face epoxy, and let's see if this is still good here. Let's see if we can do this without making a mess. Yeah, we're still pretty good. Alright, so I'm gonna take this paste epoxy. And guys, this is a gamble. That's a pretty big push. Um and I'm just gonna take that and literally so from the top of the grip, not from the bottom where it was tight, from the top of where that grip sat, I'm literally just gonna take this epoxy and smear it down there. And I know there are probably better ways to do this. Some guys use like a um, acetone method or they'll take rubber cement and make it slide down there. I've never done rubber cement method. Um, I've heard from a lot of people that it works really, really well. Um, but I'm going to do one thing that I have done here um, plenty of times and that's put plenty of rod bond on here. I'm even going to come above that mark a little bit. And then I'm going to microwave my grip with a little bit of paper towel and make that grip really soft and as soon as that grip gets soft we're going to come back and do this. Um, slide that grip down it you got to make sure you don't have any dry spots on your blank because it will stop that grip in a heartbeat and there's nothing worse than getting a grip halfway down to where you want it to be and having it stop um, if it gets really close, you can take your blank and just trim it off at the grip, and now you're going to have a shorter gap. Um, but uh, you shouldn't have to. Just take that epoxy and uh, make sure you're good all the way. Let's see if I can just stop making my hand super messy. All right, so. The reason that grip doesn't fit perfect is because the um, that grip is universal for a lot of different lengths, right? So a lot of different length gaps. And a lot of this down here probably isn't necessary because we're going to get a lot of excess from up high. All right, so that was like a lot of work. It's quick and easy, right? Took less than a minute. Now that's all epoxied up. And that epoxy is going to serve as a lubricant to help get that grip all the way down. Okay. So again, Zachary Taylor says that the Yeti raffle says add to wish list. Does that mean y'all are done with selling tickets? No, we just got to check something on the site for that. Okay. Yeah, you, there should be an add to cart, but there might be something wrong with it. We are rushing that to get ready for this lot. So hopefully. I don't know. Let us know. Oh, we'll check it out here in a minute. Um, all right. So, got that all good to go. Ed Barmister asks, what kind of blanks are they? They're Batson, rain shadows. Okay. So, what I've done here, quick and easy, I already had a paper towel ready to go. It's the same as you taking a paper towel at your house, right? This is just a paper towel here from the shop. And I'm just gonna kind of wrap that paper towel around my grip. And that's just gonna keep it from having any, any kind of issues. Just kind of moistens your grip, keeps it from cooking. And um, that's it. We'll go over there, we'll microwave real quick, and then we'll run over here and slide it down. Or we could bring the blank with us. Mm. We'll bring it with us. Just because, that's going to be a big push. Let's check this out. So this is a mess right now. We're getting close to having our blank wall done. Um, this is all going to be blank. So everything is all over the place right now. you got to use the mess in the video while we're reorganizing. So take your drip, wet paper towel, microwave, 
30 seconds per kilogram. I'm going to check it after 30 seconds. If you cook it, it'll warp it, right? So you just want to keep checking it until it's really soft. And once it's really soft, don't cook it any longer. And um, if you check it and it's still, you know, kind of firm, put it back in for another 15, 20 seconds. All of a sudden it gets really soft and you know it's time to go. Push that thing down here. I should have another solid movement. 30 seconds. Okay. Hot, but it's not soft enough yet. As if you're still with us, you're way past over time. So the original, the first gap that we built was already completed. So you can go back and watch it. We're just showing you how to do a second build here. That was 20 seconds. Getting there, not quite. This bats and EVA is really dense. I don't want to cook it, but I want to make sure it's nice and soft. And this is a gamble. I haven't built one of these yet on this particular kit. Um, the Winthrop one went together well with the Winthrop tip. That was the size four. Um, the blank and the hook or blank and four grip with the number three Winthrop. We'll see if this vaccine gets all the way down there. Well, we're getting close. Don't cut that, I can feel. When it's telling you, it's not, don't just, don't just wait till it's hot. It's got to get soft where it squeezes nice and quick and easy. Uh, that way the EVA expands and you can, it goes down like butter. When you do it, push from the top, and just let it go. Don't push and pull because you can make like a Chinese handcuff. Just stretch it apart and make it tight. You want to push, let it mushroom and open up. Alright, let's try. If we mess it up, we mess it up. Alright, so we're going to push from the top. And when you get to the bottom, and then stretch it back out. Take the blade, your favorite towel. Make sure we're at the bottom of it. And that paper towel became a mess, but that's alright. That's why we use those lint free ones. That was yeah. That's it. Woo! I was a little nervous. Now, how many of y'all didn't think I was going to make it? Uh-huh. I'm with you. I was a little nervous there. Put that in there. We'll go back. Let's clean this up. Guys, okay, so just like that, you do the same thing with any rod. You know, if you get a piece of EVA, a grip, or an offshore rod, or whatever, and it comes up too tight, and maybe you don't have the right size reamer for it, um, Heat that EVA up in a microwave, and it goes down like butter. So the one thing you got to do to be careful is make sure that you stretch your EVA back out. You saw me in the other side of the warehouse there. I took my grip and I pulled it once it was seated because you will compress a 10-inch grip to a 7-inch grip, and you'll be left with a shorter grip, which isn't the end of the world. But if you want a 10 inch grip, you gotta make sure you pull it back apart. Questions? Comments? Concerns? No, they're uh, just a raffle. Raffle. Alright, I need a red paper towel here for these. Alright, well, that junky paper towel fell apart on me. But it's all good. I'm going to clean this up, and then in the next live feed today or tomorrow, when I get a chance at the house, I'm going to wrap, wind wrap on this, then put the hook on it, and we'll be good to go. So with that, we'll end this live feed. So i got to go find a rag. It's that hot, um, that hot grip.
kind of activates that rod bond to start to cure. So it doesn't come off quite as easy without a little more um, than just paper towel. So we'll take um, all that alcohol is helping clean that up. We'll put our butt cap on. You never have enough hands when you're working with this stuff. But we'll get this cap on. No, I don't have to worry about that anymore. Plenty of epoxy there. Let's get it excess. Seat that. Push that down. Pull that a little bit. And you can play, you know, back and forth to kind of stretch your grip out. But that's it. It's seated. We're good. Wipe the excess off. Spray with alcohol. That alcohol eats up that epoxy. And that epoxy already sat there for a while too, so it's a little bit thicker than normal because it's the second build, right? There we go. Clean that up. And that's it. That'll dry. When we get a better rag to clean up the blank. Guys, this U40 is a little bit sticky here. I'm gonna go to Better Rag, clean this up. Check out the specials page. Go to our Yetis giveaway. Ten dollar raffle tickets. You get the credit back and get big credit. It's a win-win. Basically free. So if you're gonna be buying any rod building stuff, get a raffle ticket at the same time. Get in there for free. Um, we'll see you tomorrow. Any comments, questions, post them in there. I'll come in and reply once I get this cleaned up. And we'll talk to y'all tomorrow. Have a great evening. God bless. See ya.